Hey everybody, Liz Klimek here, Planetarium Manager at the South Carolina State Museum. And it's Thursday, the end of the week, which means it's time for me to share some more cool things you can see up in the night sky this weekend. If you tuned in last week, we pointed out some of the prominent things you can look for in the evening sky. And this week, we're going to do something just a little bit different. So have you ever wondered why some constellations, some objects get all of the attention and get mentioned more than others. For example, why does Orion the Hunter and the Dippers get so much of the spotlight? What about Camilla Partilis, the giraffe, for example? There are 88 official constellations, so why don't we hear more about some of the other ones? Well, to help answer this question, we are going to use the current night sky. So let's go ahead and just jump into what the night sky will look like on Friday night. So that's tomorrow night at about 845, looking towards the southwest from right here in Columbia, South Carolina. And we still have Venus blazing like a brilliant star off that western horizon, though it's not a star at all, but the second planet from the sun. But let's go ahead and go on into night. Just fast forward time here and head on to a time of the night when all of that sunset glow has faded away and all of the stars have come out. So we're going to have to go forward to about 930 on Friday night. Now I will say that if you go out Thursday night, you will see the full moon rising at about sunset. But Friday night, here's what's going to happen instead. So this is about 9.30 Friday night, and let's pan around so we're looking more straight south, and look how beautifully dark that sky is. That's because the moon isn't going to rise till later. Now, I love the moon, but whenever it's out, it tends to drown out some of the dimmer things we might want to take a look at. For example, right high overhead is something that looks like a backwards question mark here. And it's a very easily recognizable pattern to see in the night sky. The moon was actually in the way of this star pattern last week. But this week, we can see that it is part of Leo the lion, the head and body and tail of that lion. So there's an idea of what he might look like. And then if we were outside and were to just tip our heads back a little bit, high overhead, you would see the Big Dipper. These four stars form the bowl and these three stars form a curvy handle. Now the Big Dipper, as I mentioned last week, is not an official constellation. It is part of a constellation called the Big Bear or Ursa Major, but we're going to focus just on the Dipper part here because there's a little trick you can use. You can take the curvy handle here, which forms an arc, and use those stars to arc to a star called Arcturus. And from there, spike down to a star called Spica. Now, Spica here is the brightest star in a constellation called Virgo the Maiden. Now, Virgo doesn't get pointed out by astronomers a lot because it's made of some really dim stars, which makes this constellation, just like a lot of constellations, kind of frustrating to find, especially if you live under an urban sky with a lot of city lights. Now, I'm going to show you Virgo the Maiden here. Oops, let me do that again because I just want to show you Virgo here. So I don't know if this looks like a person to you, but this is a person standing up, kind of tipped over. Here's an idea of what she might look like. But look how very dim the stars of Virgo are. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, so hopefully you can see that better. So I'm going to show you a trick that I use to help me find Virgo, especially since I don't have access to a nice dark sky. So basically, I use that arc to Arcturus trick because I can find the Big Dipper pretty easily. I spike down to Spica, and then I use Leo the Lion as a landmark. So I'm going to go ahead and mark Leo the Lion here once again. So there's our lion. Here's Spica. And kind of in between, so if I take Spica head up towards Leo, there's a very faint, broad V here, which I think is perfect because it seems to stand for V for Virgo the Maiden, even though that's not what it's supposed to be. It's just the upper half of Virgo. But 
it's a nice pattern that tells me I have found Virgo. Now finding her leg stars is quite a bit of a challenge and I haven't been successful in finding those from an urban sky, but maybe you'll have better luck than me. Another fun thing to do is to follow this V upwards to one end of it to a star here that is called Vindemiatrix or Vindemiatrix. I'm not quite sure. You can have some fun playing around with various pronunciations. But if you can find this star at the end of that V, at the very tip of Virgo's shoulder here, and head towards Leo the Lion once again, somewhere in between, roughly about here, there is a galaxy. And I'm going to cheat here and go ahead and just show you the exact position of that galaxy. It's called M87, not the most memorable name, but it did make headlines about a year ago when in April of 2019, astronomers were able to image the supermassive black hole at the very center of that galaxy. So this is the galaxy, and I'm gonna show you what that black hole at the very center looks like. So there it is, kinda looks like a fuzzy cosmic donut. But this is really, really cool because this galaxy is so far away and that black hole lives at the very, very, very center of this. And so it took telescopes scattered all over the globe acting together as one giant Earth-sized telescope in order to get that picture. So that is pretty impressive. And even though you can't see that galaxy or that black hole with just your eyes, if you know where to look for it in the sky, I think it's really cool to say you're staring down a supermassive black hole that's six billion times the mass of our sun. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here and I'll go ahead and take away that picture of the black hole and pop back in here and say I hope this gives you plenty of ideas of things you can look for in the current night sky. Don't worry if you can't find the specific things that I pointed out. At the very least, I hope that you'll have a chance to take a break from your computer screens, take some time out for yourselves, just go out, get some fresh air, and enjoy all that the universe has to offer right above your very own home. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a safe and wonderful weekend. Hope to see you again next week. And in the meantime, take care out there.